Hi guys, this is Sadek from Robin.com and in this video, we'll show you how to flash the latest Pixel OS ROM based on Android 15 onto Nothing Phone 2. So please take a backup of all the data on your phone and then let's get started. First off, get hold of the latest Android SDK platform push from my guide and extract them onto your PC. You may extract them anywhere you want. In our case, we have done so in C drive. And as you could see, these are the files of platform tools. Once you've done the extraction, you will now have to enable USB debugging and OEM unlocking. USB debugging is required for ADB command, whereas OEM unlocking is required to unlock the booter on your phone. So let's now enable both the toggles. For that, you will have to go to the set settings menu. From settings menu, go to about phone. Then go to nothing OS and type on build number seven times. You will get a prompt that you are now a developer. Once that happens, go back again, go back, go to system and you should now see developer options. Go there and enable the toggle next to OEM unlocking as well as USB debugging. You will get a prompt, tap on OK, you might get one more prompt, tap on allow in that prompt and with this, the debugging is now enabled, let's verify the same. So for that, go to the address bar of platform tools, type in CMD and hit enter. If that does not work out, not an issue, simply open the CMD window. From the start menu, type in CD space, paste the path of platform tools, hit enter and you are now inside the platform tools directory. Now type in ADB devices and verify that you are getting a serial ID. If you are not getting this ID, then Unplug and replug your phone from the PC. Disable and re-enable USB debugging. Likewise, turn off and re-enable developer options as well. Or tap on revoke USB de debugging. Use the official USB cable that came with your phone. And use the USB 2.0 port on, on your PC. So carry out his USB fixes and verify that you are getting an ID. Once you are getting this ID, you will now have to unlock the booter on your phone. Do know that unlocking the bootloader will wipe off all the data. And it might make the warranty null and what as well. If that's well and good, you could refer to a guide and the video and get this job done. Simply boot your phone to the fastboot mode and use the fastboot flashing unlock command. You will get a prompt on your phone. So use the volume key to highlight unlock the bootloader and press the power key to confirm. With this, your phone will undergo a wipe and then boot to the OS. Once that happens, make sure to re-enable USB debugging once again. Moving on, you could now get hold of the Pixel OS ROM zip file from here. Apart from that, you will also need to have the super empty IMG file. This is required to wipe the super partition. If you don't flash this file, then we will get the error of flying update 7 and install device open error so to avoid that issue from happening in the first place we will have to wipe the super partition via the super empty mg file so get hold of this file from here and apart from that download the rom zip file as well once you have got both the files let's now move ahead with the next step so now you have to boot your phone to the fast boot mode for that type in adb reboot bootloader and hit enter and you nothing phone to should boot into fast boot mode in a few more seconds once that happens, you will have to verify the fastboot connection as well. So type in fastboot devices and verify that you are getting an ID. So just a second, if you are not getting any ID, then you will have to install fastboot drivers on your PC. We have made a separate guide and a video on the same. You could refer to a guide and get the job done. Once you have installed the fastboot drivers, right click on the Windows icon and choose device manager. Then expand the Android phone section and verify that your phone is being shown here as Android boot to the interface. So this as well as the serial ID next to fastboot. Signify that your PC is able to read the phone in fastboot mode and we are now good to go ahead. So now let's start off with the flashing process. In this regard, your first course of action is to flash the Orange Fox recovery. But before that, it's recommended to wipe the super partition. So first and foremost, transfer the super empty IMG file inside the platform tools directory. So it should be somewhat here itself. This is the file. So let's transfer it here. Once you have done the transfer, now copy the command to wipe the super partition and paste it here and the partition has now been wiped now you'll have to install the orange fox recovery onto your phone we have made a separate guide and a video on the same still i'll show you once again how to get this job done so we are done with the first step the second step is also done the third step has also been checkmarked now comes the fourth step so get hold of the recovery file from here the recovery will be in a, in a zip format so you have to extract the recovery zip once you extract the recovery zip you will get the following files so copy the recovery img from here and transfer it inside the platform tools directory which is over here and now you could flash the recovery file so type in fastboot flash partition name which is recovery and file name which is recovery.img and hit enter and the orange fox recovery will now be flashed onto your phone in a few seconds once that is done type in fastboot reboot recovery or you may also simply use the volume key to highlight the reboot to recovery mode recovery mode and press the power key to confirm either one will do and your phone will not reboot to the orange fox recovery you may also copy paste the command from my guide directly. This is the command to flash the recovery and this is the command to reboot to recovery. 
simply copy the command from here and paste it in the CMD window. And your phone should now be in the orange box recovery in a few more seconds, as you could see. So with this, the flashing is now complete. Let's now start off with the flashing of the ROM zip file. So for that, our first course of action is to do a format data, which will wipe off all the data from your phone. So make sure that you have taken a backup beforehand. If that's well and good, then let's wipe and do a format data. So go to wipe, format data, type in yes and hit the orange check mark. The format data is now complete. Once that is done, go back, go to menu, reboot and choose recovery. Your phone will now reboot to the orange box recovery and this will remount the data pollution, meaning you could now easily access the storage on your PC and transfer the ROM zip file. But in some cases, it might happen that your phone might not be shown on the PC or if your phone is being shown there, you might still not be able to access the storage. So if that is the case with you as well, then simply doing a copy paste of the ROM file will not work. So you will either have to use a USB OTG or the ADB push command. For example, in my case, the phone is being shown here, but I, as you could see, I cannot access the storage is all blank. So I cannot use the control C control V option. So my next best course of action is to use the ADB push command. For that, you will have to transfer the ROM zip file inside the platform tools directory on your PC. And once the file transfer is complete, rename the file to something shorter. So let's just rename it to ROM and the complete name becomes ROM.zip. Now type in the command of ADB push file name, which is ROM.zip space forward slash and location on the phone, which is SD card and hit enter. And the file transfer will now start. Apart from the SD card, which is internal storage, you may also do the file transfer to the data or the temp directory, all of them will, will work, but it's highly recommended that you use the SD card only for the ease of convenience as well. Then apart from that, you may also use a USB OTG device. If you have, just make sure to mount the OTG beforehand and only then flash the file. But please do not use the ADB side load to get this job done because side loading will also end up flashing the ROM zip file. But we don't want to flash via side load, we, we want to flash via the install option. In case of Orange Fox and DWRP recovery, you should always use the install option and not the ADB side load. The side loading is only used for those ROM that for those recovery that does not have the install option. For example, all the AOSP recovery like Lineage OS or Zero recovery. In those ROM, you could use the ADB side load, but in Orange Fox and DWRP, you should only use the USB mount option. But if your phone is not visible on the PC, you could then also use the ADB push command, which is what we are using. So let's keep Wait for a few more seconds and as you could see, the file has not been transferred onto our phone. So let me verify and the file is there. So now choose the ROM zip file and swipe to flash. The flashing will now start and it will take up to around 5 to 6 minutes. So let's just wait for that to complete. So guys, the flashing is now complete. Now you will have to once again do a format data just to be on the safer side. So let's do that as well. And the formatting of data is now done as well and now comes the most important part. So as you could see. The ROM has been flashed to the inactive slot, which in my case is slot B. So currently I'm in the active slot A, but the ROM has been flashed to the slot B. So now I'll have to make a manual switch from the active to the inactive slot. And you will also have to do the same. For that, go to the menu, reboot. And currently the slot A is active, so I have to go to slot B. If in your case slot B is active, you will then have to make a switch to slot A. Just the reverse. So in my case, I will type on switch to slot B. And as you can see, the changing boot slot is now complete. And now tap on reboot system, you will get a warning sign, no OS installed. This is just a false error message. Simply swipe to reboot and your phone will now reboot to a newly flashed OS. Do keep in mind that the first boot up will take up some time. That is completely normal and nothing to worry about. From the subsequent time, that will not be the case. With that said, let's wait for the boot animation or the boot logo to appear. Either of which will signify that the flashing has been done successfully. And it might take up to around 10 to 15 seconds more for the boot logo to appear. So let's just have a look at that. After which we will have a look at the ROM features as well. And this is the new boot animation from the Pixel 9 series, which is there in this ROM. Now you will have to wait for a few more seconds. So guys, with this, we are now inside the ROM setup screen. As of now, I'm skipping the initial setup process and I will set up the ROM offline. If you want, you may go online, link your Google account and restore all the data as well. But for now, I'm skipping that just to speed up the setup process this will take only a few more seconds and with this we are now inside the latest pixel os rom based on android 15 and we have a few pre-installed google apps as well apart from that we have the power menu in the ql styles then the android 15 revamp settings menu is also there 
now let me have a look at the volume menu okay this is also the new volume panel which is there in android 15 you may change the volume from here and even add a new device from this section or you may also tweak various other audio settings from here then you have the option to change the sounds or notification from here it's quite great to see we have numerous pixel default sounds as well likewise you may also change the alarm and notification sound from here as well again we have all the pixel stock notification sounds then apart from that we have the predictive back gesture as you could see you get a sneak peek of what is behind the menu using this new feature then the ability to do a screen recording in just one single app is also there so once you choose record one app and tap on next you will now have to choose the app of your choice and the recording will only take place inside that app as soon as you make a switch to any other app the recording will pause and only resume once you are inside that app once again then next up let me have a look at the battery information so the battery information section is missing this should not be a cause of major concern you could also get the job done via third party battery apps but it would have been nice because i have seen that feature across numerous other usb rom which is missing from here anyways moving on let's now have a look at the private space which is there in the privacy section so first and foremost you have to set a screen lock for the ease of convenience i'm using a pattern lock so let me choose that and confirm it and this is the private space you may go there and now you may either choose the same lock that you have for the lock screen or implement a new lock screen so as of now i'm choosing a new lock but again i'll be using the pattern because it's quite easy for now but it's recommended that you choose a pin or a password or if you're using a pattern at least use six plus six look at so with that said the private space is now set up tap on done as you could access the private space from the app drawer tap on the lock icon and put the password and as you could see this is the private space you may also add new apps from the play store over here then if you want to hide the private space even from the app drawer then tap on the settings icon and go to hide private space enable the toggle from here and the private space is now gone even from the app drawer just lock it once and as you could see it's gone although you can easily access it either from the search bar of google private space or you may go to the settings menu and access it from there as well and as you could see the private space is now once again visible and apart from that let's have a look at the wallpaper and style so you may change the theme from here the ui and ux and the color change will take place across the entire os you may also change and choose other colors from here likewise you may switch to the light theme from here as well for now let's stick with the default theme going back you also have the option to change the lock screen clock style so for now let me choose this clock if you go to the home screen you have the option to enable the theme icon and they will be enabled in the home screen then you could also change the app grid size maximum is 5 cross 5 which should be sufficient for most of us and it's implemented and apart from that let me have a look at the system section so the same old ui style nothing new as such as you might be aware the pixel os rom does not have many customization tweaks as opposed to the c android or evolution x rom this only offers a clean stock ui experience without any tweaks whatsoever even let's say go to the home settings and over here as well you could see there aren't any major tweaks such as enabling the taskbar or force enabling theme icon in the app drawer all these are also missing over here as well but that's not a major cause of concern because this rom is known to offer a clean stock ui experience similar to the pixel experience rom which is no longer there so it's the perfect fit for that and that's just about it so guys on that note i round up this video if you have any queries with regard to any of the steps do let me know in the comment section and thanks a lot for watching